Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jerry. I'm an AI product lead here at Sana. And today, I'm joined by my colleague, Daniel, um, who is one of our AI lead engineers on, on Sana AI. Um, over the last year, we've been building a lot in agents and agentic workflows for enterprises. And today, we'd love to share a few of our findings in the space um, with, uh, with you. But first, you might ask, how did we get started on this mission in the first place? Why are, why are we doing this? And our mission at Sana is to, to solve access to knowledge. And we see access to knowledge and solving access to knowledge as solving a meta problem. Once this is solved, we believe that a lot more people can fulfill their missions much quicker. And to this extent, actually earlier today, we've announced another $55 million uh, venture round. Um, so we're very, very happy to, to share that as well here today. <laughs> now, what do we do at Sana? So at its core, Sana is an AI assistant platform. We bring together unstructured data, so you can think about data from meeting notes, or you can think about data from one of the 100 plus integrations that we have live in the platform as well as structured data. So this can come from any of your databases or any of your systems of record. And then all this data is actually available in the Sana user interface via enterprise search, via natural uh, language chat, and then via Sheets, which is something we just launched earlier today, which allows you to do a lot more complex workflows and, and data extraction. However, for the rest of the presentation today and our findings, we'll focus on on the chat with uh, structured data part of uh, Sun AI. And when it comes to our agent dealing with structured data flows, um, our agent can handle two different types of, of workflows. We have data analysis, and then we also have transactional workflows, which are, which are more, more complex. And this is important because these type of workflows allow users to interact with data from multiple sources directly in Sana without ev uh, ever having to leave the, the unified um, user platform. And with that, I will now um, go and show you a live demo of what we've built so far. So this is, our, this is our platform. And here I can use the chat. And I have a prompt that I want to ask Sana AI to help me with. And here I'm asking it to do the following task. I'm asking it to list opportunities owned by a specific user in a specific stage in my CRM account. And Sana actually has to do a couple of things here in the background um, that are not, so it's not just, uh, just one thing. It first has to get the description, complete the search, and then, um, and then put all of that into, into a query, uh, query sequence. I can go ahead and I can ask Sana to do something else um, as well. I could say add to a Google Doc, for instance. And I can actually show you exactly um, what, what Sana has done here in the background. So in the first step, we have to look at the schema that we have in Salesforce. So what does it mean, opportunity? And how does this tie to everything else we have in Salesforce? How does this tie to the accounts we have in Salesforce or the people we have in Salesforce, et cetera? Then the second step is to understand what we mean by Frederica. So we're looking for a specific user, and we need to tie to understand her user ID to be able to tie it to the opportunity. And then finally, in the Google query, in the final query, we are actually uh, compiling everything together. And that's how we got to, to, uh, to the result. And then um, here, I asked it to push this to a Google document, for instance. I can make any changes I want. So let's say I have a demo up here. Uh, maybe this one will change the amount. And then I can easily create a document directly in Sun AI. Once this is done, I can actually click View in Google Docs. And this is opened in a, in a new sheet for me. So that's one way in which in you can interact with structured data in Sana. Another way you can interact with, with, um, with this type of data is through what we have here in tasks, which are pre-created um, user prompts, or you can think about it as templates as well. Here what I'm doing is I'm selecting a meeting that a colleague of mine had. So this is an actual um, uh, meeting that took over uh, Zoom. 
And then I'm asking Sana to pick out specific things like, was the budget discussed in the meeting? Were specific competitors discussed in the meeting? Um, what's the need that was mentioned in the meeting? And then I want those things to be sent to the relevant fields in, in my Salesforce account. So Sana actually does a couple of things here. First, it matches the opportunity name from the meeting with the uh, relevant Salesforce account and then allows me to review the rest of the actions here. So let's say if I want to make some changes, maybe the timeline is actually October 30th, I can make that and then I just click update opportunity and then this is automatically synced in Salesforce. So if I come to Salesforce and then I, I go down to my actual BANCT fields, I can see that this has actually been mirrored here as well. So now that I've showed you a little bit of uh, what's possible to, to build in Sana, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague Daniel, who's gonna explain how we've actually been able to build all this. Thank you so much, Jerry. So before I dive into the architecture, I wanted to talk about one particular problem that we've seen and provide some analysis. So agents can sometimes fail to sequence complex tool calling flows. So for example, in the Salesforce analysis that we saw recently, that required these three particular tools. So the first one was getting the schema, and let's say the agent tried to go just straight to the SQL query. It might not actually know what our Salesforce instance looks like. It might output some incorrect SQL. Um, maybe you can recover from that, but this is not great for a user in a real-time interaction. So I wanted to do some analysis and figure out exactly what kinds of agent configurations are gonna be more or less successful for this problem. The first thing I looked at was different strategies for providing instructions. So a lot of you are probably familiar with the kinds of chat APIs for a model like GPT-4.0, but just to kind of refresh, if we're thinking about where we might wanna give instructions to an agent or an assistant, that could be in the system message. So ours is something like you are Sana AI, we give it some personality guardrails. That could also be in the, in the user messages, and then it could also be in the tools themselves. So each request is gonna have the tools attached and the tools are both the schema that it might call, but also they have a description. Um, so I'm looking at where do we wanna put these instructions for these sequences. One strategy could be to provide a how-to guide in a user message. So for example, if using tools, please use tool A, then tool B, then tool C. Gets the point across. Strategy number two would be to list dependencies in tool descriptions. So we could say tool C depends on tool B, and tool B depends on tool A, and so you can infer from that that you need to do tool A, then B, then C. So just a different way of getting the same instructions across. And so we created this grid of different agent configurations to figure out which of these strategies will be more successful. Across the top, you can see the two different instruction strategies, and down the side, we can see different numbers of tools that we gave to the agent. And so what we found is that providing this how-to guide instruction in a user message was super important. Um, even with 15 tools, the agent was able to pick out the right ones and complete our workflow successfully. And just to clarify, this is for one of these three-step workflows. Um, this strategy works well in system messages as well, especially if you have a simple agent that has one purpose. I think that's a great solution. For us, we like to use user messages because that allows us to put these instructions at different points in the con conversation history. And then on the right side, the tool description approach did not work very well. Um, and interestingly, this is not a phrasing issue. If we copy and paste the exact same prompt from our user message into a tool description, it'll still fail to sequence these complex workflows. So even though it's being turned into the same tokens, a little bit different application there. And I think this is really consistent with the view people have that an LLM might be really good at picking out a needle in a haystack, so 15 tools, not a problem. But for these reasoning or sequencing tasks, it can use a bit more instructions. And so that how-to guide approach is a great way to do that. For simpler workflows, we ran the same analysis and found that it was successful across the board. So that's great. If your agent only needs to use one tool at a time, two tools, you probably don't have to think too hard about instructions and you can probably fit a lot of tools into the same agent. So now, having done that analysis, getting back to our solution at Sana, of course, we wanna handle both the complex and the simple workflows. So we've created this internal interface that we call a tool set. A tool set is gonna have a name. If you're looking at right here the tool set for 
the uh, workflow that we were just demoing for the Salesforce agent that queries the data. So the name is Explore Salesforce Records. Of course, we have the three tools that are required as part of this tool set. And then we also have our cross-tool usage instructions. So copying this verbatim from the code base, when using SOQL, and that's Salesforce's version of SQL, always refer to the describe API to understand the schema you're querying, and then use the find record ID tool to find the ID for relevant foreign relations, and so on. So we're kind of getting the sequencing instructions across, and overall this tool set is a package that's gonna allow our agent to execute some specific workflow in some context. But of course, going back to the title of this talk, we're talking about multi-talented agents and how do we solve this problem of doing all these workflows, you know, creating Google Docs, querying Snowflake, Salesforce, et cetera, all from the same user interface. And so for that, we're gonna need some routing. So we have a router LLM that's gonna pick out tool sets. And for that reason, each tool set also has special selection criteria. So also copying verbatim from the code base, this tool set allows the assistant to find or list Salesforce records of any type using SOQL queries, does not handle right operations, only select if one of the following is true. So you can see how we can kind of carve out the very specific conditions in which the user's message should be handled by this particular set of tools. And in this way, we make sure that the user is not accidentally getting a bunch of tools thrown in their face, but also that if they want this agentic workflow to happen, they're gonna end up with the best set of tools to complete it. So now tying that all together, when our backend receives a new message from the user, we kick off in parallel that tool set router I just discussed, as well as our primary query planner and search engine. So we have, the search engine is kind of like a default tool set that's really the bread and butter of Sonnet AI. It has vector search, web search, and knowledge graph search. And so all together, this is pulling unstructured and structured data from all across the company's knowledge. And assuming that we select a tool set, that is gonna go to our recursive agent along with those search results. So this part is really important. This is how we can do these requests, like for example, when we were analyzing a meeting and then taking that unstructured data, putting it into Salesforce, that's how we're able to pull search results and then put it into a structured place using tool sets. One last thing I wanna talk about is high integrity tool responses. This is another thing that we take very seriously. So you could think of an agent as interacting directly with an API. However, in a system like SANA, that's not really the case. The agent is interacting with validators at first. It's interacting with a user perhaps, right? We saw Jerry was able to make modifications to the request before submitting it. The user could cancel it. Um, so there's all these different system interactions that we think it's really nice to be able to display to the agent so that the agent can make intelligent decisions going forward. So an example tool response that we might send back to the agent is one, tool use passed schema validation, two, the user modified the name field, three, the user submitted at 2.41 p.m., and finally, the API responded with success, and so on. And so in this way, our agent always knows exactly what's going on with the user and enables these really high collaboration workflows. So the two big actionable takeaways from this presentation, first of all, add tool sequencing instructions via a user or system message. This will enable these more complex workflows. And two, provide comprehensive system and user feedback and tool responses to make sure that the agent understands what's going on and can collaborate really well. So these are just a few of our learnings from our research here at SANA. We're super excited to continue building general agents and we think that by combining that with all of your company's knowledge, we'll be able to unlock huge amounts of productivity and help people solve bigger problems. So thank you.